Yo, 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 it is TA Thursday, and I'm your host, Randy, and today we are going to be talking about, in my personal opinion, what is the number one tool you can use in your arsenal, and that is horizontal support and resistance lines. You single-handedly can be an above-average trader if you understand fully what horizontal support and resistance lines are. So because we have 10 minutes, we're going to get cracking right into this. So now, while some indicators are reactive, so that means it gives you information on past data, some indicators are proactive. So while horizontal support and resistance lines is a reactive indicator, in my opinion, it can be also be a proactive indicator. So what do I mean by this? So what I'm going to zoom in, and I'm using Bitcoin because it's neutral and I'm not just charting any coin. So we're going to be talking about this. So number one rule is usually when you're going to be um, when you're going to be drawing a line or a horizontal support and resistance line, it's a three touch rule. In my opinion, if it does not touch three times, it is not, it doesn't have enough validity. The more times it touches, the more validity that it has. So we're going to go here and we're in tradingview.com. So I'm going to grab my line. So if I'm going to go and take a look at this and because I have it on the one day. So the further you zoom out, the more validity it's going to have. And when I'm talking about validity, so I'm going to draw something here. So let's take a look. I'll say, I'll say this is a line, you know, and keep in mind, this is, so we got like one, two, three, four, five, six touches. Um, let's go, uh, let's say right here. So we got a touch here, we got a touch here, touch here, touch here. Maybe let's say we got one, two, three, four. Okay. So what we've done is we've confirmed that we have touches and I like to use candle bodies because a close tells more of the psychological story, the, the underlying story of where the price action is over a wick, right? So if you see here, this means the price action came down and it got pushed all the way back. But what we're looking at is for a close. Now, with horizontal support and resistance lines, if you see here, look, it went and we touched it and it came back. We touched it. We broke through. Now we came back. So every time we hit a line, so this is what we call a resistance. This means the buyers are coming up and people are selling off. This is where your institutional investors at all of these points, they leave their footprint. And what do I mean by leave their footprint? This means where they had distribution. So at this point, the price action came up. There's a big run up, run up, run up. And they said, you know what? Hey, I'm going to take my profits here. I'm going to have distribution. Then what happens is when the price action is coming down, if you see these, this is where accumulation is. So on bigger market cap coins, this is literally a signature. It's a footprint signature of where people are saying I'm taking profits or I'm accumulating. So when I said earlier that this is a, a reactive indicator, it can also be proactive. So we're looking here, you know, we're into February and this is on the one day. But now if I go like this and I drag it over, and say we drag it over, look at this. This line from there, we got a touch, we got a touch, we got a touch, we got a touch. Then on here, pretty much had a touch, a touch. Once again, another one, another one. And then down here on the bottom, we had a huge, this is a huge support line. And now keep in mind, you guys, we're going into June now. And this was back in February. But the price was coming down, and this is where the institutional investor says, hey, I'm going to reaccumulate here, right? And now if we keep going, we had a big run up again. Now if we're going all the way forward to where we are right now, look, here's the line. What? We had a touch, a touch, a touch. So this, this mark that we had back in February um, is still relevant this February. That was almost a year ago. So... In, you know, a, a guy can do this all day long, and, and this is what I wanted to show. But if you can understand that with this, and this, you know, many, many times, if you just pick a spot where you're like, okay, realistically, you know, it touched here and here. As you can see, it came and it broke through, 
and it touched. So you can do this all day long, you guys. But what I want to say is the really important part is if you're looking for really, really good entries, you go out onto the one day, you go back. Now, sometimes there isn't enough chart history. There really, really is not enough chart history. So then you can break it down into four hour. You can break it down into the one hour. You know, you can really, you can really break it down into times like this. But these, these other marks that we left before, obviously, they're going to be a little more noisy. But this, if you guys really, like I said, if you really fully understand, you can go through. So when you're looking at entries, you look at an entry of where has there been a strong accumulation footprint left by institutional investors? And if you're looking at around where to take profits, where's there been a large distribution phase? Then you can also, if you really want to get into it, you can kind of take uh, like a rectangle tool. And you can take some areas where, let me try to find one. Um, maybe you could have something like this. You could be like, here's like, you know, it, a big wicked out area in, into this. This is where, you know, this is where we call like order blocks. Um, we can get an order blocks into another section, but yeah, guys, so on your Wix, on your counter bodies now, sometimes when people are asking what best goes in confluence with this, like what can I verify this to tell more of the story? So you can always tell with the volume signature. So what's really, really strong, if you see um, with right into here, so this is on your volume. And the reason I keep my volume all pink is because if you have it, you can pick whatever color you want. Whatever color is just easy. This is just easy on my eyes. I'm usually up later and whatnot uh, or up early. Um, it tells me this is a 21 moving average. Is there enough interest in the contract that is above the moving average or is it under the moving average? So five days ago, because we're on the one day, when I noticed that there was these huge accumulation wicks, these huge accumulation areas, with a much higher volume than the preceding day. So if you look here, you know, while the price action is going really up and down and looking, you know, we had a move from about 45,000 bucks to $51,000. It wasn't a lot of interest. It, it, there really wasn't. So it, it's like this drive never really had that validity to it. Now, when it came down to here, we have this absolutely increased volume signature that shows, okay, now we have a huge accumulation area and we have a huge drive up. So the battle between the bears and the bulls, the bulls are in charge here. So while this drive down, there was participation, there was interest. That's why this drive down, but it never really had that huge push on here. So you could tell this was almost kind of a fake out. It was almost a trap to say, okay, now if anyone was changing their positions to maybe go long, then it got drove down. You guys always let volume be your guide. Your volume is your confluence. Now there's another indicator. So if you guys go into indicators and you type VPVR, volume profile visible range, and you go here. Now what I want to show you is I'm going to go back. So all of these, if you take a look, what this means, this means there was a balance between buyers and sellers. How many contracts were at that point? So if I was thinking, okay, you guys, there is a big rundown. If you looked during this section, there was 1.451 million contracts bought and 1.45 million contracts sold. So here's the balance between the buyers and sellers. So you can understand, was it more of an accumulation? Here was almost kind of even, but... On this next charge up, if you look back almost for the year, this area doesn't really have a whole lot. So that means that on your next drive up, once we clear here, it will probably run more free flowing from about that 39,000 range to about that 43,000 range. And then also because of we panned out, we looked at the VPVR, we understood that there was a massive, massive point of concern. This red line is called a point of concern. And that shows where we had strong 
really a lot of buys and sells. So there was probably a really good indication that if we were going to run into something that could be a potentially a bounce for a turnaround, this is going to be a point. This is going to be a big, thick cement wall that they got to try to hammer through. So you guys, while this doesn't work perfectly every time, if you can really go through and really get into your charts and understand the importance of fact that while this is a reactive indicator, it can you can be used proactively. If you use the daily candle bodies, it will probably be more valid as it's going down as future support and resistance. You need three touches for something to be confirmed. So, you know, also some people say, hey, you know, this is, well, this is a trend line. And then I got a, I got a trend line right here. In my opinion, you guys, horizontal support and resistance always beats vertical support and resistance or diagonal or, or diagonal lines. But now if your diagonal lines are running in confluence with your horizontal support and resistance. It adds more validity to the story that this might stick within this channel. So you can use these, but in my personal opinion, they're not as effective. Just use it as another tool to assist you in that. So you guys, support and resistance lines today, single-handedly probably one of the best tools you can use always. When I pull a chart for the very, very, very first time, I pan out to the one day. I pick major areas where I would consider um, that they would be support and resistance. And then I go down to the six hour. Then I go down to the two hour. And then I go and I start di dissecting it from there. So number one, you guys, horizontal support and resistance. You can be an above average trader. You can get great entries, great uh, you know points where you should probably start taking profits. And um, yeah, hope you guys all enjoyed this. And until next week, I'm not sure what my topic is going to be, but... If you guys like this, do all the things like subscribe, stay tuned for next TA Thursday. <laughs>